Hi, I'm Ailey Johnson, and this presentation is on William Nat Schoenfeld. Um, William N. Schoenfeld is a former behavior analyst who is best known for being one out of the three fathers of behavior analysis. He is, in fact, frequently referenced in our Cooper textbook. In this presentation, I will discuss five major sources that I found and the importance of each as it relates to the field behavior analysis. analysis. First, here's a quick look at a snapshot of his earlier life. And so here's a lovely picture of William and Schoenfield. Um, he was born in December 1915 and died in August of 1996. He got his PhD from Columbia and focused most of his work on animals for his experience, experiments and humans when it came to teaching. So when it comes to the animals, he worked with mice and pain and monkeys for their cardiac rate regarding condition stimulus. That has to do with physiological um, functions. And um, when it comes to humans, he was a teacher and mentor, um, especially to Catania, who actually wrote his memoir, and um, he defined a reflex. So he's done a lot. <laughs> and. Um, one of the sources I found was on his book, Principles of Psychology, in which he taught students the basics of radical behaviorism. And it was actually the first book ever written really about radical behaviorism, and so it was really monumental. Um, and he taught it at uh, Columbia University. Um, and so he actually wrote that with Fred Keller, which is another one of the three um, fathers of behavior analysis. So on to his work. Um, he did an experiment with pain in mice um, and it ended up becoming a dead end because he wasn't able to really document how the mice were feeling the pain. Um, usually when uh, with inner skin experiences you express um, the emotions and feelings through verbal interactions and animals cannot speak. Um, so whenever you would see a mice react in a certain way, it's really about us pushing our own emotions or experiences on the, the animal, which is anamorphism. And so if they had actually come up with any results, it would have been confounding as it wouldn't have been inaccurate. It would have been inaccurate. Um, and so then he also went to define what reinforcement is as to what we use today. Um, and he really went into depth about it, about all of the different types of conflicting terminology like reward and punishment, which is why he ended up going to um, reinforcement as it wasn't as contradictory or um, there wasn't as much of a negative stigma or connotation. Um, he also spoke about different types of fixed intervals, um, which we have read about, which is fixed ratio and fixed intervals, um, through the use of mice. Um, he ended up finding out that it really didn't matter which one you used, as long as the different types of circumstances um, or factors remain constant. Um, and so then this, we kind of learned, really depends on which ones you want to use, depending on the behavior or circumstance that you're trying to decrease or teach an alternative behavior for. Um, so Schoenfield also worked with monkeys, um, which is these little guys, <laughs> and he used them for cardiac rate. And so what he ended up doing was conditioning a response and then giving them a pharmaceutical medication that lowered their cardiac rate, which when he did that and presented the stimulus, for the conditioned response, it didn't occur. So he basically figured out that there is a biological function to behavior. And as stated earlier, he wrote the principles of psychology. Um, he wrote this in order to teach the basic concepts of behavior analysis to students for the first time. Schoenfeld was surprised at how long the book maintained its usefulness and accuracy. Um, and I'm sure that our own Cooper textbook was based off of that as well. So for my mock interview questions, I'm really interested in what really 
pushed him to study behavior. And so a lot of my questions have to do with that or what brought him to study the different um, papers and stuff that he wrote about. And so uh, my first one is, what about behavior intrigued you to start creating behavior analysis? Um, what, were the, what were your aspirations for, for behavior analysis? If you were able to see it now, would there be, would it be the way that you expected it to go? So um, I know back then they didn't really have as much technology and stuff like that. Um, and as a behavior technician, I know we use technology a lot. But honestly, I'm very interested to see if he really intended this to go to work with um, individuals that are really socially, um, I don't know, they have social problems like kids with autism. And so... I'm really interested in where he thought this was going to go versus where it is currently. Um, so I was also curious what his own thoughts were for the limitations of behavior analysis. Um, I think that would be really interesting to learn, especially as he was a founder of behavior analysis. And also, because he was uh, in the 1900s, I was curious if he thought that the little Albert conditioning exper experiment was ethical. Um, if not, what other ways would he have performed the experiment in an ethical manner? Um, if you're unfamiliar with this, it's when little Albert um, was presented to all of these scary factors and it really traumatized him. Um, we discussed it earlier in the course as well. And so the fifth one is he wrote a book about religion and behavior for it and I was curious as to where he stood with religion and why um, just because of that book that really interested me because religion isn't really spoken about especially in terms of behavior so for the contribution to literature common um, effects that I really noticed was that most of it is really finding the backbone of behavior analysis, which was the terminology and why they came to that um, conclusion to use the term and as well as the definition. Um, and then I also found that, oops, um, the ones that stood out were the one with the monkeys, where it was the cardiac rate, um, just because that had to do more with physiological um, factors with behavior, whereas before he never really introduced that. And also the religion one, which I really didn't study too much as it wasn't one of the main resources I used for the paper. Um, but I thought it was very far from what he really was known for. So I thought that was interesting that he really wrote about that and it, you know explored it. Um, and he's important because, again, he's the founder or one of the founders of uh, radical behaviorism and really pushed for the beginning of this entire field. So, I mean, he's just way ahead of his time. <laughs> and so these are all of my references that I used in my paper and this presentation for the photos, um, including the one of him. All right. Thank you.